I'm very proud to say I am one of the highest ranking women at the Citibank Sioux Falls site. And at any given time, I've been responsible for up to 60 project managers in three different global regions, North America, Asia, and Europe. I am a self-proclaimed control freak, I'll tell you that. And I'll let you in on a little secret about all project managers. We think we can change the world if all of you just got in line and followed our project plan. <laughs> If you doubt what I'm saying, just ask my husband in the audience and my daughter. I'm constantly making them project lists and setting up tasks for them. I just don't always get the same level of cooperation from them as I do when I wear my director's hat at work. Today, I'm going to speak to you about six specific things that they don't teach you in college. You know, there, and there's just general things that I'm going to show you uh, that I've learned over my life and my career. So to get this started, let me tell you a little story. When I was in third grade, I, cre I uh, set up a surprise party for my classroom, uh, unbeknownst to the teacher. I arranged for all the students in my class to bring all the things necessary for a party. We had cupcakes, a lot of cupcakes. Remember, this is third grade, a lot of priority on the cupcakes. But I also arranged, you know, punch, plates, all of those types of things, and parent chaperones. I knew we couldn't have a party without the parents helping out. So I knew, um, you know, once I got this all arranged and all of these parents started showing up on the day I set up for them to bring all of their things for this party. Um, and by the way, I didn't happen to include my parents as part of the chaperones. I figured I could handle this particular project on my own. And so as all of these parents start to show up and they bring in their cupcakes and the teacher's a little surprised and, and eventually she kind of asked, she goes, who set this up? And I proudly shot up my hand, me, me, I did it. Well, the teacher was nice enough to not say anything during the party, and we enjoyed our cupcakes, a lot of cupcakes. And afterwards, she pulled me aside, and she politely asked that I include her in any new plans I might have for her class in the future. It was at this moment, though, that I realized I had influence. You just had to be willing to do the planning and arrange it. I also learned that you don't necessarily ask for permission. And looking back, asking for forgiveness later <laughs> and then permission when you want to accomplish a task later. Let me tell you another short story. In high school, I ran cross country. I wasn't the best on the team, but I showed up to practice every single day and I worked my butt off. Didn't matter what the weather conditions were, the task that was at hand, and even on those super hot August days, those freezing cold November days, or the days we ran hills for what seemed like forever. I was there encouraging and helping my other teammates get through the practice. I'd serve as their mentor, their motivator, and sometimes their counselor. If we were on a demanding course, I was the one who would get them, I would talk them through it and get them through the practice and get them through the course without them wanting to give up or slow down. I was team captain for three of my four years of high school. It was during this time that I learned that if you led by example, demonstrated integrity, and truly cared about your teammates, people would respect and follow you. Strong leader doesn't always have the most talent to lead effectively, just the most determination, compassion, and zeal for excellence. I grew up a child as a career Navy chief, and as some people called us, we're military or Navy brats. We moved to a new city or state every few years before we finally landed in Brandon, South Dakota. Moving frequently and experiencing change allow me to not fear change, but to embrace it before it allows us to ex expand our experiences and our friendships. However, when we moved to South Dakota in fifth grade, uh, my fifth grade year, that was my last significant move of my childhood. Okay, you can do the math and figure out I've spent the majority of my life in South Dakota, and I am very proud to call South Dakota my home. I attended USD, but ultimately I ran out of money. I stopped my career path and I entered the workforce, not really knowing what I wanted to do or my direction. You may have heard counselors or parents telling you to help find, you know, find your passion, find your calling. Well, whoever was calling me must have had the mute button on because I had no strong desire, no direction, and no money. When I left college, I ended up working a minimum wage job, quality checking electrical components on tiny little circuit boards absolutely monotonous work, day in, day out, and after two months of this, I knew this is not what I wanted to do with my life. People around me were surviving paycheck to paycheck. 
and living lives that resembled very sad country songs. I knew, <laughs> I knew there had to be more than this. There were people with careers out there. I just didn't know how to get one. So what my point is, is that my path was not a straight one. I did drop out of college. And for a while, um, I didn't have the luxury of completing college in my early 20s, like most of you will have. I had to work full time while I was receiving my degree, but I stuck it out and I did graduate with a business degree and ultimately a master's degree. I look back on my life now and I realize there was a plan for me. I just had to be the one to drive it. Well, as I say, everything happens for a reason and eventually I saw an ad at Citibank and they were looking for customer service representatives. But the key thing that caught my attention is that they were willing to help pay for college. And I thought, how great is that? I could pay for college and I could get a better paying job. I interviewed for the job and I was thrilled to get the position. It was funny, once I started working there, I found that I enjoyed the fast pace and the challenge of constantly improving in the phone center. I was taking calls and eventually I was volunteering for extra duties. I'd handle mail, different jobs, just to get experience and, and understand the workings of the different parts of the bank. Eventually, I was talking to my manager and saying, how do I get a job similar to yours? So I finally, at this point in my life, figured out what I liked doing and what I was good at. As I look back on my now almost 30 year career, I've learned a few things and I'd like to share those with you today. First and foremost, you do not need an Ivy League degree to excel at life. To reinforce my point, take a look at this article that was recently in the newspaper. Harvard's prestigious debate team loses to New York inmates. Interesting, isn't it? A group of New York prisoners who had little to no resources outwit a prestigious Harvard team. This goes to show you that you can do whatever you want with your life. You just got to put your mind to it. You can and you will learn just as much here if you apply yourself at the University of South Dakota or any public university without a $250,000 student loan following you around like a pet for the next 30 years. I believe in higher education and I believe that learning never ends. You need to keep learning and keep attaining new knowledge, otherwise you will stop growing as a person. I believe a college degree doesn't guarantee you anything either no matter if it is from an Ivy League school or USD. You need to earn what you get and you need to work hard for it. A degree opens the door of opportunity. Whether or not you stay inside, it's up to you. Second, be vocal about what you want and when you want it. There's yet to be a manager that I have worked for that I haven't gone to and spoken to about what I want my next job or my next promotion to be. I asked their advice, I asked their counsel, how do I accomplish this? I put my aspirations out there, I vocalize it. And if I've learned anything over these 30 years, you must own your own career path. You may not get there without help, but you must own every part of the experience. You're responsible for where you're at today and the direction you're going tomorrow. Now, with that said, you need to be ready for the role that you want. Are you educated on the role? Do you have the appropriate background? Have you taken, your st taken steps to put yourself in that role? Are you prepared to do that role prior to getting the role officially? You need to be. This brings me to my third item. You need to be prepared to work the job you want and not necessarily the job you have. Do you volunteer for more? Do you do those tough and undesirable tasks that no one else wants to do? Are you reading and keeping up to date on new technology and processes? I am twice as old as most of you in this room and I can tell you I have a textbook on my desk that I'm currently reading about new processes and that I'm installing in my current job. I work in technology and things are constantly changing. I spend several hours a week researching and reading up on new, tech, new topics, keeping up on new technology. As a final note on this topic, my last several jobs, I've served in the role for sometimes up to a year before I've officially gotten that role. Fourth, network, network, network. You might be telling yourself, I don't need to network. I got a good job. I'll just keep applying for different ones. Or, you know, my talent will speak for itself. No, no, no. Your talent's going to speak for itself up to a point. 
but eventually you need to speak to people, and I mean really speak to people. I'll tell you this, networking skills are going to serve you better and will be more valuable to you than a 4.0 GPA here at college. Now I'll be honest with you, networking is hard for me. It's hard for a lot of people. I struggle to want to get out of my comfort zone and actually go meet people. But when I travel for work, I make it a point and I take the time to get out and see people on the floor and just socialize. When I'm in Asia, I go out for afternoon tea and I let people casually stop by my office just to bring up their latest challenge. Get yourself out there, but don't necessarily focus on just work. Get out into the world. I have found that relationships build the foundation of trust, and whether it's sharing a salad with a counterpart of mine in my Jacksonville, Florida corporate site, or taking my team out in Poland for a celebration dinner, it's important to network. It enhances teamwork. It lays the foundation of trust. I encourage you to all start this in college if you haven't already. Get out and meet people. Join a club or an organization. And as they say, never burn a bridge. You never know when you'll be working with or for that person someday. Fifth, find a mentor and then eventually pay it forward by becoming a mentor. I have been very blessed in my life to have a wonderful set of parents who served as my first mentors. They taught me what it was like to work hard, be honest, and have integrity. As I progressed in life and in my career, I've had a lot of people as unofficial mentors. People I could honestly look at and say, I want to be like you someday how they acted in a stressful situation, how they maybe took an extra time and helped me through a situation, and just explain things to me. I've also had official mentors. The people that I reach out to occasionally and just touch base with and ask if I can bounce things and ideas off of them. I tell you, I've reached out to some fairly senior folks to, to be my mentor or to just talk with, and I have never been turned down once. Be respectful of their time, and they will pay it back threefold. Also, be a mentor. Whether it's on your floor, your sorority, your church, your fraternity, get out there and get involved. Sixth and my final point this evening, develop a work-life balance. All this stuff that I spoke about previously will have no meaning if you don't have balance in your life. Faith, family, health, having a purpose and my friends, those are my main concerns. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. Keeping those five things in balance is hard. And there's sometimes that, you know, I struggle. Everybody struggles to keep them in the forefront of their life. I love what I do, but I know that there's just some days we all struggle. You ask yourself, why do I work this hard? Am I making the right decisions in my life? What I tell everyone is that ultimately you have to hand it over to the higher power in your life and reach out to people if you're struggling. Life is not easy, and it requires work. Nothing worth having is ever easy. So to summarize here tonight, the six things they're not going to teach you here at college. You don't need an Ivy League degree. Get out, work hard, get your degree, and then keep learning. Second, be vocal. Control your career. Control the direction that you're going in your life. If you don't take control of it, no one else is going to do it for you. Third, be prepared to do the job you want and not the job you have. Always be looking for opportunities. Look for ways to expand your knowledge inside and outside of your normal role. Fourth, network. Get out and meet people. Become involved. This is going to better serve you than a 4.0 here at school. Fifth, find a mentor, be a mentor. Take advantage of your current situation and the people around you. Speak to people and learn from them. Then pay it back. And sixth, work-life balance. Find ways to keep your life in balance. Make sure you're constantly reevaluating the things in your life and make sure they fit your priorities. I'd like to conclude tonight by saying that my path was not a straight one, and I've had challenges. I'm sure all of you will have your own challenges. Everyone's road is unique. Embrace your uniqueness and forge your own path. I hope your path is straighter than mine, but regardless, don't give up. Education is the great equalizer in life. It can overcome poverty, 
prejudice, sexism, and any other challenges that come across your path. Your investment in education and yourself is always going to be the best choice that you can make. I want to thank my parents for helping lay the foundation of who I am today. My family for always supporting me uh, and even humoring me by allowing me to create a project plan for our last family vacation. <laughs> and especially the University of South Dakota for having me here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with you today. Oh, and one last comment. As a proud Yote mom of a current USD freshman, go Yotes!